Okay, guessing game one. I made a simple game to show off my programming skills, see if you can beat it. We have the program, its source code, and a make file. Uh, tools can be helpful, but you may need to look around for yourself. All right, well, let's see what we've got here. And remember, if something seems weird, it probably means something. All right, well, we have these um, in my system. So let's look at the make file first. So the make file is going to tell me this is a 64-bit executable. It's got no stack canary, so if there's a buffer overflow, I'll be able to exploit it directly. It's not a position independent executable. Uh, it's statically linked. That's going to mean there's lots of code available if I need to do a ROP chain. So let's look at vuln.c. So we have a buffer size of 100. We have this increment function, which just does that. We return a random number uh, up to the buffer size. Okay, we get a random number. We add one to it. Uh, we say, if we get a guess from the keyboard. If it's a valid number, we go to the print statement. And then if we, oh, we get to do this win. So in win, we can get a name of up to 360 characters. Now note that buff size was 100, so we do have a buffer overflow. And then it will print that out. Okay, that's pretty good so far. So I'll just run this. Now this is called guess one. Uh, I will call them right. Remember we would like to guess. Three, no four, no three. All right, now we really need to be able to figure out what the random numbers are. What happens, like they didn't call SRAN, what, what happens if they don't call SRAN? So I have a website here that tells me if you don't specify SRAN, it's as if the uh, SRAN one has been called. So that means the sequence of random numbers is gonna be the same every time and it will be predictable. So I can just create my own little program, right? I copy their program and I'm going to just get those random numbers. I'll take a look at them myself. So So you can see that I can actually predict a whole bunch of sequence of random numbers here. So the first one's supposed to be 84. So if I say long and I say 84, I'm a winner. So that's pretty good. Um, all right, so I can put lots and lots of A's here. Now my segmentation fault, so I did crash the program. So that's promising. Um, what I would really like to do at this point is get a shell on remote machine and I guess I'll try to do this with a ROP chain because they, they have this nice static thing. So if I say ROP gadget slash boom. Gadget binary. I'll tell it I want a wrap chain. So it'll analyze the source code. It'll find all of these that are called wrap gadgets. So those are basically a small amount of code followed by a return. And so by putting the address of each of those on the stack, I can piece together an entire program. And this uh, Rob Gadget program has actually built an entire program for me. And what that program is going to do is it's going to do a syscall and call bin sh. Right, so you'll see there's bin sh, it's put on the stack, it's going to end up putting that in registers, and then it'll call system. 
Now this looks really long. And the reason it looks really long is you'll see that there's lots and lots of those add rex and we only get 360 characters so if we do that uh let's see how i really want to do this i'll just take this and we'll stick that in the file and we'll say Right, so there are like 60 of those. Each of those is eight bytes long because those are 64 bit instructions. So that's 480, that's too big. That's too big. So looks like there's a blank line at the top. So I actually need 59 of those add RAX ones. Now RAX is the return um, register. So when you call a function it returns a value, then it will go into RAX. So I know that get random is going to return a value from 1 to 100. So if I could get that RAX to be 59 because of just calling get random, that would be really handy. So we see that get random plus one is 60 there. So if I get it right when I get to 91, and then as part of my shell code called get random to put that 60, that 59 really, because it's not gonna add the one, into RAX, then I should be able to get a shorter shell code. All right, so, um, That's what I'm going to do here. I've got an overflow. So there's 120 characters just to get me to the return address. And then this is the code that was generated from the Rob Gadget program. I've replaced those packs with these P64s from uh, Pwn Tools which is a, you can pip install Pwn Tools, that gives you this nice library. You'll know that this is the output from Rob Gadget. I replaced all those packs with P64s. And you'll see, instead of doing the lots and lots of adding one to RAX, which it was doing 59 times. So it did like XOR, RAX, RAX and then it added one to it 59 times. I'm replacing that with a call to get random. So there's gonna be my shell code. You'll see my shell code's a lot shorter. So now what I do is I connect to the server on port 28953. This is a Pwn Tools code, connect to that. I receive the lines. Then 12 times I send the number one, and then I send the number 91. And so I want to get it wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 times. I'm going to get it right so that the next time it calls get random, it has a 59. So I'm getting it wrong 12 times to get down to the one just before the 59 for get random. I get the answer right. That's the 91. I then will send the shell code. So I'm going to overflow that buffer and it should break. Now, so the, the next question is really sort of like, how did you come up with this number 120? So if we look at this, oops, it's still bald. And we'll say uh, 84. So so that's 26. It's 15. 
52. That's going to be 104. All right, so we see that seg fault. And you'll see that seg fault happens at that QRS. And so what that means is I can count how many characters it took me to get to that QRST. And that's where you get that 120 from to know where it's going to be pulling that first return address. So again, we've got that padding to get me to the return address. I have that ROP code that I got from ROP gadget. I had to modify it so that instead of doing all those, you know, storing EX to be zero and adding 159 times, I just call get random, which will get 59 into EAX. And I can call this, it opens the connection. It says congrats, and I'm now in a shell that's there. So I can look, these are files on Jupyter. I can cat. And now I have my flag, Pico CTF, rop you like a hurricane. And there we have it.